Well, tomorrow, three weeks, we will all go to the polls to vote in the abortion referendum. The yes and no campaigns are in full swing right now. Each side anxious to convince voters who have not yet made up their minds that they should vote a certain way. But what happens after they do vote? Tonight, as part of our coverage in the run-up to May 25th, we're asking what the real results of a yes or no vote will be. So in just over three weeks' time, all these ballot boxes will be sent out to the polling stations. And finally, we'll get our chance to have a say on this issue. But what exactly are the implications of a yes vote and what are the implications of a no vote? What we make of the message will be key in determining the outcome as we return to an issue that's been the subject of five previous referendums in the last 35 years. The outcome if there's a no vote is fairly straightforward. The situation as it stands today continues. Abortion in Ireland will only be available in very limited circumstances, governed by the Protection of Life Act 2013, which passed after a tumultuous political debate. Pregnancy may only be terminated uh, in circumstances where the life of the mother uh, is subject to a real and substantial risk, and that includes a risk of suicide. Uh, so that is set down in the 2013 Act that is established uh, as the interpretation of the Eighth Amendment in the courts. Uh, so should the referendum be defeated, then that will remain the case, uh, and it won't be possible for the Oireachtas to introduce any additional grounds uh, for the termination of pregnancy, such as rape or incest or fatal fetal abnormality. Uh, the law will remain exactly as it is at present. So termination in all cases, apart from those covered by the 2013 Act, will continue to be punishable by up to 14 years in prison. In the case of a yes vote, a significant series of developments is planned. For a start, the government has proposed outline legislation under which terminations would be allowed. But that's getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Dr David Kenny is a lecturer in law at Trinity College Dublin. So what would be the situation if the amendment is carried and before any legislation is passed? The law for the moment remains the same and it stays uh, as it is now, which is the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act of 2013. That stays in place unless and until the legislature passes a new law that would uh, change uh, the law on abortion. So. With the passage of the referendum, the constitutional context changes, but the legislative context doesn't until there is a full debate uh, and discussion about what law should be enacted to replace the current regime. So this referendum is happening in a context we're not voting in the dark. If there is a yes vote, the government has outlined proposals for when and how abortions would take place in a less restrictive regime. Terminations would be allowed up to 12 weeks without having to give a reason, with a mandatory 72-hour waiting period. After 12 weeks, terminations can take place up to viability, around 24 weeks, if the life of the woman is in danger. Similarly, abortions will be allowed from 12 to 24 weeks if the health of the mother is seriously threatened. And in the case of serious fetal abnormality, terminations will be allowed at any time. Terminations would also be allowed in an emergency if there was an immediate risk to a woman's life or serious harm to her health. The Minister for Health has said that terminations after 12 weeks will only be available in exceptional circumstances. If viability is established and the pregnancy is ended on health grounds, then it will be done through early delivery with a full medical team on hand. The proposal is just a general scheme of a bill and those of us who follow politics know that the general scheme of a bill is then translated into the heads of a bill which will be debated to all Shannon committee stage and then move forward to the Shannon. What we have now I suppose is a, an outline but not a perfect or indeed a descriptive piece of uh, legislation. It just gives people an indication as to what exactly the government would do in the event that the Eighth Amendment is repealed. So just to be clear, this proposed legislation is not on the ballot paper on the 25th of May. 
What you're being asked to do in the referendum is to choose to replace the current clause with a statement that gives the Oireachtas the power to legislate on abortion. And there's a separate indication by the government of what legislation they intend to bring in, should there be a yes vote. It's very important that people understand they are being asked a constitutional question, and that's the people's role in a referendum, is to answer that constitutional question. The later question of what law should follow, that's something that has to be decided by our representatives, and if people want to influence that decision, they have to do that separately through the political process. We've had a number of referendums in the past where the referendum question was joined to potential legislation that would be passed on foot of the referendum. So some previous examples would include the divorce referendum in 1995, the children referendum in 2012, uh, referendums on Iraq's inquiries. Uh, and in all of those cases, there was a bill published uh, which indicated what the government intended to implement if the referendum passed. Uh, what's different about this referendum to those ones is that on those occasions you had a government with a clear majority uh, and so you could be fairly confident that if the referendum passed that the legislation that had been published would be what would ultimately be implemented. But we're in different political times. This is a minority government with a shaky hold on power. The amendment, if it passes, gives the Iraq this permission to change the law, but it doesn't compel that the law must be changed in itself. Uh, so in the event that uh, the referendum is passed and no new legislation is passed for whatever reason, be that that the government falls or that the, the current Iraq this simply can't muster the votes to pass it, uh, then there is nothing in the amendment that insists that the law must be passed. What could potentially happen is, in the event the Eighth Amendment is repealed and the legislation is introduced, there may be a bit of a rush to get it, uh, to get it through the Dáil and Chan and to get it to a point where there's no return, and then potentially we could have a general election. But there will be a pressure um, applied on politicians in the event that the Eighth Amendment is repealed to stick to the proposition that the people were aware of when they voted on May 25th. From Citizens' Assembly to Oireachtas Committee to Government Bill took just over a year, which was a surprise to many. Commentators like myself have said that this would be a very difficult and tricky path to the road of a referendum. However, the Dáil and Shannon, in the Dáil and Shannon, it's actually been quite, you know, it's been quite simplistic, it's been quite easy. The, those who have opposed it have opposed it, and those who are in favour of it have favoured it. Uh, we've been proven wrong on a number of occasions, and I would imagine, you know, the more that we speculate about how difficult it will be to legislate um, in the event that the Eighth Amendment is repealed, the more the politicians will show us that we were, in fact, uh, wrong. In three weeks' time, the ballot paper will ask a very simple question. Do you want to change the Constitution, giving the Oireachtas the power to legislate on abortion? That's the choice that will be before us on May 25th. Richard Downs reporting there. I'm now joined by Minister for Culture, Heritage and the Girl Talk, Josefa Madigan, who's advo advocating a yes vote, and by Mary Butler, Fianna Fáil TD, advocating a no vote. Let me begin with you, Mary Butler. If people vote no, then we continue to export our abortion problem to England. Women continue to take abortion pills in their own homes. And that's fine by you, is it? No, it's actually not fine by me, but unfortunately, what we're going to be asked on the 25th of May doesn't deal with that specifically. What it does do is it's asking us on the 25th of May, do we want to remove um, the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, which protects the unborn child, and do we want to replace it with the government may um, legislate for the provision of termination of pregnancy? So what the people are being asked is not a simple solution. There are no simple solutions here. And we'll come back to that point of legislation in a moment, but all the people we've heard about who've had abortions after potentially fatal fetal diagnosis and then bringing the ashes home on the plane, all the abortions after cases of rape, abortions because of the serious health risks to the mother, they all have to take place in England as now. They do, and that is unfortunate, but when we look at what has been presented to us by the government, we are being told that abortion is health care. Abortion isn't health care. Um, the medical procedure for abortion is to terminate the life of the fetus. That is not health care. And we've learned from looking at what's happening in the UK that 97% of all abortions in the UK are done on viable babies with very healthy mothers. It's only less than 1% deal with the really, really hard cases. Okay, let me bring the minister. 
I suppose, Minister, you're not just proposing a situation where we'd have a law dealing with those tragic cases I mentioned. You're proposing abortion for any reason up to 12 weeks. C can I just say, first of all, uh, Miriam, that's in line with uh, 21 out of 28 European countries. It is deliberately without specific indication, and that's really um, to cater for women who have been raped uh, for incest cases, and um, also uh, a lot of women who have actually travelled to the UK and abroad for abortions and for terminations have actually been using contraceptives, and it has failed. And often it could be six, seven, eight weeks before they actually establish the fact that they're pregnant. Um, one of the issues that I have is, is the World Health Organization has actually said that essential reproductive health care is very important but in terms of abortion. Because we're trying to do a specific I, I, thing, yeah. to just find out exactly what it will mean if it's a yes or no. So I mentioned there that you were propo proposing abortion for any reason up to 12 weeks. You're also proposing abortion on grounds of a serious health risk up to viability really up to 24 weeks that's correct so after 12 weeks it's uh, it is effectively if it's a serious uh, risk to the life of a woman but also serious harm to her health which at the moment uh, in, in the Constitution we have a great difficulty and we've heard from many many doctors in terms of trying to protect the unborn and the fetal position as well as trying to look cater for women's health and, and I would just say to Mary well, it's a very liberal regime don't you risk the referendum no, failing? No, it's actually quite restrictive, uh, Miriam. The, the, it, 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 it's, it's only for a, a finite period mm. of time. Um, after that, after viability, it, it, you know, as the Minister Harris said in that explainer, uh, the baby will be delivered to full term. But I just, I just want to say to Mary, the first step in this is to take it out of the constitutional. There's an absolute bind on the women of Ireland. Their life has been at risk. We have heard countless stories of these women. And I, I just feel that as a country, we're ready to stop abandoning them and, and be so okay, well, neglectful of them. If, because we're trying to actually develop and find out tonight what, okay. what will, will actually materialise. For instance, Mary Butler, if this referendum fails, what would you say if a constituent comes into you and her 14-year-old daughter has been raped? Well, if this, if this referendum fails, it will tell the government, firstly, that we're not ready for a liberal no, regime of abortion. No, I asked you with respect to a specific question. If a constituent comes to you and says her 14-year-old daughter has been raped, what would you say to her? Well, what I would say to her, because I have two daughters myself, there is no doubt about it, that is the most heinous crime that can be perpetrated on any child, and she is a child. And I would have hoped, I would hope personally that she would have been in a position to get the morning after pill. I certainly, personally, would not force her. That wouldn't be my decision to make. If her mother decides that she wants to take her daughter for an abortion, that's her decision but to make. But they have to go to England. I know they have to go to England, but Bringing in, a, bringing in a culture of unlimited access to abortion up to 12 weeks with no restriction as to reason. Mary, that, is that, is more liberal, that is more liberal. That is more liberal. That is more liberal than what's in England. And we know when abortion was introduced in England in 1967, it needed two medical practitioners to sign off on it. It was 50 years last Friday since abortion okay. came into England, and there was 8.8 .8 million babies aborted. They are facts. But they, are, they are figures from and the bring NHS. Bring back to specifics, actually, because yeah. we have an awful lot of highfalutin discussions about this. What if that 14-year-old girl says she has to have an abortion because if she precedes the pregnancy, it will destroy her mental health? But you see, unfortunately. Mental health may not, do you know what I mean? An abortion may not solve her mental health issues. But there, she may there, feel that it would, Mary She Butler. may, but there, you know, we, my, my, we have my, learned. Let her finish I, and then no, no, no. You back we, 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 we have learned, like, there's no studies done to show that abortion will help her in her, mental, in her mental health situation. At the end of the day, that is a decision that she and her mother will have to take. But introducing um, a regime of abortion into Ireland to help I, the, the less than 1%. Ma I, I just find this very difficult uh, uh, as a woman to listen to it because I, I think women in this country for too long have, have, have felt that they have decisons imposed on them and how do you for whatever reason. And you, you, you're actually saying that you're okay with a 14-year-old travelling no, I didn't say a, a, that. abroad for, for, no. for an abortion what to I the UK. What I said is that's the decision she will have to make herself. Yeah, actually, sorry, just to say, 3,265 women travelled in 2016. Yeah. There were 56 from your own constituency, Mary. Yeah. I don't, what would you have to say? Which is important. I mean, there's a lot of focus, I suppose, on the rights of pregnant women, which many people will agree with. 
What about the rights of the unborn child? The, there is, the Supreme Court decision was very clear about that in February. And there is protection of the unborn through the common good, which we, can, we are allowed to do through legislation. And the, the, the constitutional protection is a completely, is a completely different type, type no. of... Uh, it's a right, it's not the a protection. The Supreme Court ruled... We have, we have the, the, a, a very S finite... Sorry, period. I have to interrupt you yeah, there. Right the, up to five the Supreme, the, the, the the Supreme Court ruled only recently that the only protection for the unborn child is the Eighth Amendment within the Constitution. No, no they yeah, did. The the they did. If, 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 you, if, if you remove the only, the only protection for the unborn child within the Constitution, if people vote oh, yes correct. on the 25th of May, the, the, when the votes are counted, all constitutional protections for the child are gone. Okay. And Minister, I cannot, I, I, Minister, I cannot, under, under, Minister, I cannot understand how you can... Thank you both very much for coming in, David. Yeah.